So maybe uh, it's a good good add on question, but so why yeah. why does the church need to seriously pursue discipleship? I think it's part of growth, and I think it's part of what brings uh, direction and focus to a church as well. Yeah. If we all feel like we have a, a common goal and mm -hmm. we we have a mission and we have a reason to to learn, uh, I think it helps uh, us to keep unified. Yeah, um, we have a yeah, yeah a reason to learn, a reason to share. Yeah. Well, that's great. That's a good answer. Um, so the next the next question we've got for this is is how would you describe uh, a maturing disciple of Jesus? What words what words would you use? Um. I've, I've had a chance this last uh, week and a half, two weeks, to do uh, a little bit of a... I want to read through the story of Stephen several times. Yeah. And, uh, of course, he was one of the early, early disciples just after Pentecost, and so Pentecost Sunday is coming up. And uh, so some of the things that Stephen um, saw and some of the things that he experienced and some of the things that he prayed, uh, I think, show us a lot about what it, what it means to be becoming a mature person. Yeah. Um, when, when he looked up at heaven and he saw Jesus standing at the right hand of God, mm -hmm. he saw a God that was big enough to impact other people's lives. Yeah. And it wasn't just that God was big enough to help him with his own situations or his own problems. Mm -hmm. He really felt like when he was making that speech in, in that room with a, full of people, yeah. that God was big enough to change their hearts and their lives. And uh, I think sometimes we need to ask ourselves a question like, how big is our God? Is our God big enough to change and, and just yeah. help us with our own situations? Or is he big enough to impact other people's lives? Yeah. So, uh, yeah, of course, it was a process for him, too. I'm sure yeah. that he, he didn't just arrive at that situation. But even in how he prayed, I mean, these people that were going to kill him, and how he stood up in that, that situation and said, oh, Lord, please forgive these people for their sins. Like, yeah. man, what kind of love is that, right? Yeah, that's like, kind of not what you would expect. You're like, they're killing me. <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to consider about loving them. Right yeah, now. no kidding. Like, um, <laughs> Lord, please, like... Um, yeah, spare my life, you know, <laughs> yeah. make them pay, you yeah. know, all that sort of stuff. No, yeah, where's no. the vengeance, right? Yeah. Like, yeah. Um, somehow you got to set the record straight. Instead, he's, yeah. he stood up and he prayed that, Lord, somehow you gotta, you got to reach these people too. Yeah. And, uh, you know, learning how to become mature where you can think outside of yourself. Yeah. And you're looking... Um, and one of those things I had to uh, reflect on that question was learning how to think eternal. Um, uh, getting past some of the things that are happening in my today and in my tomorrow and thinking yeah. about what's happening. Like, what, is, what does God want me to see yeah. when I look up at eternity? Am I seeing Jesus at the right hand of God or am I still working about, or worrying about a work project or am I yeah. worrying about this? Uh, learning how to think long term. Yeah. So um, focus on a relationship with Jesus, absolutely. Yeah. Focus on Jesus. Learning the truths of Scripture, staying grounded in the Word. Uh, learning to love God, love people. I think we're getting some of the, some of this next question now that your your oh, answers are ready. Answer. No, this is good. It's flowing well. Yeah. Um, and maybe Marilyn, you have some some add to add to this. But what passions has has God put on your heart when it comes to discipleship? Like what's where where is God leading you? Yeah. Um, I I do enjoy. Like I said, I'm a bit of a busy body. I do enjoy the outdoors. I like planning. Uh, I mean, we had great time planning the church picnic with Jonathan and Lisa. I love getting people together. Yeah. Uh, smoking foods, uh, deep frying stuff. I'm, I'm usually a little bit more. <laughs> I'm usually, I feel a little more comfortable behind a barbecue than I do in front yeah. of a camera, to be honest. But uh, they're all good, um, mm -hmm. you know. And I find it that, uh, and I think we've had this conversation in the yeah. past too. Food is a great way to connect people. Yeah. Um, you know, having having campfires in your backyard or where else, they're doing these things that help connect people, help bring people yeah. together. Um, Church is one of those things that God has called us to do, and community mm -hmm. life is really important. Yeah. Learning how to interact, especially with other Christians, and, and learning how to love people that are that are different. Like people, yeah. other Christians are going to think differently. They might have different opinion than you are. Learning how to love these people and respect them. So one of the things too uh, was learning to appreciate that God has wired and gifted people differently. Than you. Yeah. Like not everybody's called to the same thing, and that's okay. Yeah. Um, it's good, even. It's, <laughs> it's, it's believe it or not, it's part of God's design, right? So, mm -hmm. um, you know, we're talking to the kids a little bit, and I know my my daughter loves reading, which I mentioned yeah. that she loves helping in the library. Uh, and Tiana loves baking and cooking, yeah. and so she's a real servant heart. So she loves dropping off cookies to, at somebody's house. 
Uh, people are wired differently. And, and so one of those things too that um, discipleship is learning how to uh, not necessarily change somebody else's agenda, but learning mm-hmm. where, which direction they're headed yeah. and try to figure out how you can help them a- achieve what God had wants them to achieve. Right? Yeah. So uh, I know we did this little illustration with those balloons and the plywood yeah. sheet on yeah. stage a few uh, weeks ago. And, mm-hmm. and that was a great illustration, I think, for discipleship too, because I, I feel comfortable at the bottom. Uh, I'd, I'd rather be uh, supporting somebody else uh, and, and trying to help them achieve what God wants yeah. them to be mm-hmm. instead of me trying to come up with a curriculum that I think might work for them. Yeah. So. And that is that is a form of discipleship, right? Is leading is. people in that way and supporting people. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Do you have more to add to that, Marilyn, or do you have... Mm-hmm. I think, uh, too, I enjoy like um, yeah. getting together with people or planning activities that yeah. connect people and, um, yeah. A heart for like young families too, yeah. and also like having yeah. an elderly mom. That's mm-hmm. also offer open opportunities, like just to get to know seniors and yeah. different ways that they maybe yeah. need help with things. And um, yeah. yeah, also with our church having a planning a new coffee center. That sounds yeah. exciting, and yeah. it's a very exciting new space. That's for yeah. sure. It's, it's it fits with a lot of what you guys are talking about. Yeah, yeah. It's one of those things that actually uh, one of the sorry. Can I, you're young. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Just go okay. ahead. <laughs> One of the first uh, interviews that we had when we started getting together was the search committee is they asked for some of my ideas. And I, and I, I know we, there had been some early, early rumors of the coffee center going on. Yeah. And I said, well, I would love to see the coffee center up and running. Like, yeah. I mean, uh, an yeah. opportunity to get different age groups kind of connected. And I think mm-hmm. we're skipping ahead a year a little bit. Again. Yeah. Well, that's the next question. Yeah. Well, well again. But um, yeah. <laughs> it, it's exciting to see people grow. It's exciting to see people learn. And it's exciting to see people um, become like on fire um, yeah. when they realize that actually this relationship is real and it's legit and it's happening to me yeah. right now. God's connecting with me. So it's cool. I mm-hmm. uh, love seeing people grow. Yeah. That's awesome. Sorry. Did you have more to... Yeah. Oh, just one other thought yeah. too. You now with the different restrictions and stuff, yeah. but um, and people find themselves like maybe shut in or in quarantine, and we were yeah. um, experienced that this spring for our family too. But then just to mm-hmm. be able to help each other out, or like or have a nice kitchen downstairs too. Like if ever yeah. we were able to maybe make some food for people who are shut in or yeah, yeah, or in quarantine or whatever. If yeah. that would be you know something that would be doable, nice. but. Yeah, it's finding ways to provide needs yeah. for for them to, for the needs that are there. Yeah, yeah. 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 you know, even uh, oh, yeah, it was actually a few weeks ago when we we ended up uh, in, in lock in our lockdown isolation. Mm-hmm. So we are, we were all stuck at home, and it's amazing how when you we can, you can't even make it to town just to pick up the basic groceries. Yeah. All of a sudden, you mm-hmm. just feel like, wow, you just feel trapped. And there was actually several different couples from church that came and dropped off mm-hmm. stuff uh, yeah. at our driveway, and it was wow, what a blessing! Like I said, we feel so it's blessed nice. to be. Yeah. Uh, part of this church community and even now to, to have an opportunity to to do that for somebody else when, yeah. when they can't make it out and pick up their groceries just yeah, pick something exactly. up for them. you get to pay it forward it's on theme for this month pay it forward yeah. May, pay it forward yeah. May. Yeah. Yeah. you get to spread the kindness spread the love all that's all that good stuff yeah yeah um, so leading into the next question yeah. is, is it's a bit of a longer one but it's very often churches seem to pursue um, discipleship ministries along well-defined lines, men, women, young adults, yeah. youth, all that sort of stuff. Um, how do you see yourself moving a church like the Winkler EMM Church uh, across those lines towards a discipleship that builds intergenerational models? Yeah. Particularly maybe in one, one of the questions we had was when, in a church whose demographic is, is a little bit older. Our, right. our, our church is probably on the little older, older yeah. side of the demographics. How do you, how do you yeah. see all of that? working um boy i mean it's easy to have ideas here when you're not necessarily dealing with budgets and whatever else i mean you could deal you could dream all kinds of things but um you know uh so there's several ideas there uh for sure Uh, one of the ideas that we had uh even in the balcony upstairs was uh you know and i see a lot of this in the backyards where people will string up bicycle lights or wherever else they'll put up lights and and under trees or where else and it really changes the atmosphere and i thought even upstairs i mean there's steel beams that kind of run at you know at an angle with the edge of the balcony and even just to string up uh there's little white lights or something in there so that i mean make an atmosphere that that kids will find enjoyable uh, the coffee yeah. center having an atmosphere here where people can, um, in different age groups or where else, even a, a mom and a daughter or whatever, can come in early and have a cup of coffee and a cinnamon bun or whatever. Yeah. Things like that, I think, will really help mix things up. Yeah. Uh, we For sure, we do have uh, you know quite a few people who are 50 and over mm-hmm. um, trying to incorporate uh, 
you know, activities and things like that. I mean, I mean there's uh, a basketball hoop outside. I know at one yeah. point in time we had kind of said, wouldn't it be cool if there was a gazebo or something outside too, like close yeah. to the where, yeah. where you, you know, the youth that are coming here, and maybe not necessarily even for Sunday mornings in the beginning, but, uh, mm -hmm. you know, starting off with the evenings or whatever else, could, could feel comfortable going, oh, there's a neat place to hang out, yeah. you know, here. Yeah. Let's go there. So yeah. yeah, I guess that gets back to my hands-on approach. I go, yeah. well, yeah, what kind of an atmosphere can we create so that kids uh, feel comfortable and feel like yeah, they want to come out and hang out in the spaces? Yeah. Um, and I think, um, I mean, thinking young, growing young, uh, is, yeah. is a part of that. Like what, I mean, eventually too, we want to pass this information that we know about a God who loves relationship and who loves us. We want to yeah. pass that on to the next generation. And if we don't have the next generation uh, coming on Sunday mornings. We either have to find a way to get them here, or we have to find a way to meet them where they are. Yeah. So, um, yeah, and it, it'll. I'm sure that takes some creativity, mm -hmm. and I'm sure I'm talking yeah. to you. I'm sure you yeah. would know, right? <laughs> especially during COVID, right? You're yeah. constantly changing things to make it, you yeah. know, uh, workable for this week or just next week. Mm -hmm. right? uh, the era of constant change. Oh wow, are we living in change? Yeah. Is the only constant we know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I mean, so maybe you, you mentioned the, the COVID stuff, and you know, it's it's yeah. fun to not talk about it, but yeah, but here but we are. Uh, you know, COVID has changed a lot of yeah. church as we know it. Um, what's your? Do you have a vision for how church would should be functioning right now during COVID, um, and maybe more more applicable for for you? But does it look different than that? May, maybe it might have to a year and a half ago and moving out of this, like moving out of COVID too. I am optimistic that we're gonna eventually get out of COVID and we're gonna yeah. be able to, to do things in bigger groups again. Uh, yeah. But I think even in, in the midst of COVID, I know me and uh, Dale Lurkson and uh, well, there's a couple other people, uh, we, we've been quite intentional about going for walks this winter. Yeah. And that's been actually really good. And, and I think that, I think it's probably off limits now. I don't know if you can do that anymore, yeah. but, but over winter we still could. And so, yeah. And I know uh, me and Pastor James had this discussion uh, a week ago or something like that too, where we, where you look at the things that you can do, and I think yeah. there's, uh, like God, God leaves room for the church. Yeah. Uh, look at the things that you can do, count your blessings, and then do the things that you can do, instead of um, feeling discouraged about the things that you can't do. Yeah. Um, just remaining optimistic and positive, and and finding, um, again, just looking around to see where God is at work, and just join Him where He's at work. Yeah. And if that happens to be dropping off groceries at somebody else's driveway when they can't get there uh, to the grocery mm -hmm. store or whatever that happens to look like, um, uh, making meal for somebody uh, that can't can't yeah. do it or whatever. Yeah, and bringing others along with you, right? It's, that's yeah. kind of what you were talking about with the whole discipleship stuff right. about doing things together and whatnot, yeah. right? And doing all of that yeah. and saying, hey, why don't you come join me? Hey, I know that's the, you talked about finding the guys that are left behind, right? It's yeah. like, hey, why don't you... Come join me. Come join me for this. Marilyn yeah. just alluded to this a little bit before, and I yeah. and I we talked about this at home a little bit. We have a really yeah. really nice commercial kitchen downstairs, and I yeah. of course I haven't checked all the rules and regulations. Of course, they're changing yeah. every uh, week or two anyway. But yeah. uh, to get in a situation where if you know that somebody can't uh, cook or can't make food or can't get out, um, getting a bunch of people together in the kitchen downstairs and just preparing yeah. the meals. Yeah. Say, hey, you know, we're going to drop off, you know, the cookies or we're going to drop off meatballs or whatever mm -hmm. it happens to be. Uh, so yeah. Saturday night or whatever day it happens to yeah. be, like, you know, if you're if you're stuck, especially some of these seniors who are living in these uh, apartments and, and they're, mm -hmm. they're really stuck, they're stuck in there, yeah. right? And they've been there for a long time. Yeah. We're going to bless them and, and do something nice for them. Yeah. But, I mean, that's oh, another one of those times when you can cross yeah. the different generational gaps that are yeah. there. Right? So. Again, bringing people in. You talked about Tiana, who's... Not exactly in the old category, and she likes to right. cook. And then you talk about, you know, a whole bunch of people that are in the old category compared to her. Yep. And, uh, you know, bridging those gaps and those things that they both enjoy. Yeah. And you bringing people together just like that. Yeah. Uh, and some cool opportunities, that's for sure. Yeah. yeah. And I think the, the relational aspect of it, I mean, it's, it's great to put money in the offering bag when money... Uh, and, yeah. and giving is part of what we do as Christians, too. Yeah. But uh, sometimes the actual, uh, like when we, when we personally, when we get involved and we see the impact that that makes in somebody else's life, that's, yeah. that's you, you can't put a price on that. Mm -hmm. um, that's when you see God at work doing, start, like, yeah. doing some really, really cool stuff. Yeah. Um, so, I, yeah, I mean, experiencing the, the life that yeah. Christ has for you. Yeah, that's big. Yeah. 
Um, so last question, and we've answered this one, I think, quite a bit already, okay. uh, but feel free to just fill in the gaps with what, what maybe we haven't talked about. Um, but as far as, um, you know, thinking forward, you're, you're in the pastor of discipleship role, uh, how do you see yourself carrying out um, the discipleship ministry in our church? What, what ideas, what, what, how do you see that playing out? Uh, again, it's, uh, I think it's very relational. Like that, that role is very relational. Um, yeah. and, and learning um, where people are at and, and where uh, God is leading somebody else. Uh, yeah. So I'll give a little bit of an illustration from uh, SBC this last year. One of the, yeah. uh, I don't know, it was a paper or something that we read, but there was, uh, and it was a, a certain pastor that had been hired for a pastoral role. And somehow he ended up on his desk instead of having like Pastor Randy or whatever else. It was Coach Randy, and one of these young girls yeah. came up to him and said, "Wait a minute! If you're if you're my coach, then it's actually your job to help me succeed in the places that I'm going." And he's, "You got it! Like yeah. exactly!" Yeah. And it actually took off in their church. Yeah. And uh, there's several people that really uh, like they all of a sudden caught the vision. It's like actually his job is to help me succeed. And wow, yeah. they, and they, they started looking for places where they could incorporate the pastor into that job so that he could help them and facilitate that. And yeah. I think that's a good, uh, for pastor discipleship, I think that's kind of a cool model. Yeah. Um, I, uh, like, I, I love seeing people grow and mature in their faith and, and doing something with it uh, where, where God has called them to be. And, and to just to write something and saying, oh, this is what I want the church to look like would be very, very tough because, again, God has gifted everybody differently and he's yeah. called them to different things. Tell me what God has, has, what the passion he has put in your life, whether it be going on missions or uh, going back to school uh, and writing essays, yeah. <laughs> you know, whatever it happens to be, um, and, and let me help facilitate that. And that would be, um, you know, one of those things that I would feel yeah. like, I, I mean, I would love to see uh, whoever uh, comes in for coffee or whatever, I'd love to see them fly. Yeah. Like whatever that happens to look like, um, and there's different resources. I mean, even as a church inside the walls. I mean, I, like I said, I think COVID is is eventually going to run its course, and we're going to be able to meet in groups again. We're going to be able to teach Sunday school classes in groups of twenty and twenty five again. Yeah. Uh, there's lots of great resources there. One of the things at SBC was they really they open your eyes to the resources that are available. Yeah. Uh, some of them are live, or some of them are through uh, video format, um, master lecture series. Uh, there's some great resources as far as books and, and things like that where people can uh, can run with it. So, um, yeah, if you have a passion for teaching, if you have a passion for missions, or else, like, yeah. I mean, you know, let me help where I can. You know, coach. Coach. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Coach, coach people and uh, yeah. help them succeed. Uh, Abe asks if you could elaborate on uh, your comment of faith being experiential. Um. I think to some degree that would go back to some of the things that I have experienced uh, living out my Christian faith. So that would be Camp Arnis where, you know, and I felt like God was calling me to that camp specifically for a, a, re, a season of growth and maturity. And I decided to do that and obey. And, yeah. uh, and I was richly rewarded. Uh, you know, I mean, this is going back like 20 years or whatever. Dave Zacharias made the, yeah. an announcement in church here saying, hey, we're looking for people to get involved in church in uh, this prison ministry, Agassiz Detention Center. And I knew instantly, it's like, I was supposed to, I was supposed to be there. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I signed up and, and we did it for almost 20 years. And uh, I appreciate the question, Abe. It, it was great. I, yeah. I grew like leaps and bounds in those years. And it wasn't just that God did everything uh, on his own. Like he still needs me to, to be obedient and to step into these roles. It's still, there's still yeah. choice involved. Yeah. Uh, God gives you lots of opportunities to grow, but He doesn't. He doesn't make you grow um, if you don't. If you're not obedient and you refuse the situation or the position or the opportunity, um, it passes you by. Yeah. So experiencing your faith would be like being obedient to the call when it comes your way, and uh, yeah. and seeing what God does with it. Yeah. God uses all sorts of experiences, right? We talked about different transformative Absolutely. experiences, right? Whether you talk about your dad and all this, all the stuff that was going on, or yeah. you talk about Camp Arnest, or you know, yeah. when I think about all the mission trips we've taken kids on, or yeah. mm -hmm. retreats, or that sort of stuff, and and God uses those experiences to help grow, challenge, yeah. 
um, experience yeah. your faith a little bit more and, and, and know that God is active yeah. and around and, yeah. and living and breathing and, and you know, at work. And yeah. it's pretty... And, and some of these seasons are hard seasons. Uh, I mean, like I said, the, to the, yeah. the you know, for me being aged eight and eight, uh, sorry, eight, nine to food fifteen or else. So there was about seven years in there. These yeah. were not easy years. These yeah. were hard years. Yeah. Uh, but at the same time, though, when when there were so many other people that kind of step back and go, oh, they're from a different country. Well, like we don't want to associate with them. Uh, yeah. Jesus was the friend that was always there. And it took me like years later where I look back and go, oh yeah, like. Mm -hmm. I, I know like when I look back and I know with this, even when even the future when, when things look uncertain and times get tough like I know that Jesus is going to yeah. be there so yeah. some of the things that you learn going through hard times and of course nobody loves uh, experiencing the hard times but uh, you do grow in those situations too that yeah. is part of experience yeah. and your just because they're not fun doesn't mean <laughs> they're, they're not beneficial right, right. right. absolutely yeah. God those uses those things. Awesome. Well, I mean, that's the that's the end of our, our questions. Unless you have other questions on the internet, so you got about ten seconds to. Oh, <laughs> Mary got it in. Mary got it in. She heard my ten second warning. Right, well, there you go. Uh, how do your kids feel about these huge huge changes in your family life? Um, it's a ride uh, for sure. Um, yeah. You know, for me to go from cabinetry and then to. Uh, going to being a full-time yeah. student and yeah. then now I'm back in cabinetry and then candidating at the same time and the possibility of another significant change coming up I mean it's I think there's an element of stress I mean sometimes they'll maybe make a joke about it here or there yeah. but I, I mean to be a I mean a pastor's kid or else I yeah. mean that um, it, it is a bit of a thing to carry right yeah so um, at, up until this stage I think and now it's been uh, about a year where we first yeah. started talking about some of these yeah. changes that were coming down the pipe. So now we've had a chance to kind of, well, get, well, yeah, we've gotten used to dad being in school and writing essays and even get ready, ready for exams and now being back in cabinetry and whatever. But uh, I know Callie's made this comment. It's like, yeah. yeah, seeing dad preach, it's like, yeah, it looks a little strange still. And it, it yeah. is, it's a transition and it, there's an element of stress for yeah. sure. Yeah. But uh, yes. excitement too and yeah. yeah. Yeah, but overall, I think we like we we spend like a, back to the supper table. Yeah. We've spent quite a few times uh, just discussing what this might look like and how this looks like. And and I know Tiana made the comment the one time. It's like I think we're gonna have better Sunday lunches if we have people. Over. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. The pressure is on. So, better so cooking at yeah, home. Yeah. So yeah, <laughs> but grilled cheese and soup. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> like, peanut butter sandwiches yeah. were good. Yeah. So yeah, we've had some chances to laugh about it, uh, some chances to pray about it. Um, but it's, I, I think overall, I think we're kind of all on the same page. If God calls us to this thing, we're going to do our best to be faithful, and we're going to, we're going to embrace it. So thanks for the call, uh, question, yeah. Mary. Yeah, that's a good one. Yeah. Um, While well, we give people another ten seconds to get a question <laughs> yeah, in, sure. Uh, we were at the end of the questions. Um, do you have any? Either you have any anything else you'd like to add? You know share whatever whatever might be on your hearts that you'd like to share to the to the Facebook world mm. <laughs> thoughts um, hmm. we've been talking right for an hour so it's okay if you don't oh, okay <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah I I I and I said this before yeah. I'll say it again uh, having a chance to be uh, you know just you know, waving at a few people last Sunday or else. Yeah. Uh, we, we feel very uh, blessed just to be able to do, uh, even just the candidate, even mm -hmm. just to have the opportunity to candidate for this position and be considered for it. It's a huge blessing. Mm -hmm. and, and we are among a great uh, body of believers, and we're, we're so grateful for that. Um, and we've talked about, uh, you know, even with some of the other people that I've met, uh, other contractors who, who know that I'm kind of stepping out of cabinetry and getting ready yeah. for this, and when I tell them where I'm applying for the job, uh, even they have said too, like, well, yeah, I think, like, we've got a solid team at EMM, like a solid core here, and uh, boy, what a blessing. Uh, so, yeah, so uh, appreciate everybody's yeah. support yes. for sure, and uh, uh, look forward to being able to, to, you know, open the doors again, swing them wide open, and just have streams of people coming in, so we're looking forward to that, and uh, have an opportunity to get together and worship together.
We got one. We got another uh, question. Ron's got a, got a good one in here for us. How would you see discipleship linking with small group Bible studies geared specifically to equip people for evangelism? It's okay. a good question. Yeah. Ron. Um, we, we actually had one of our assignments at SBC that, that uh, we, we read through, I think, probably five, six, seven different models of discipleship. And uh, there, of course, there's some, several of them that actually were, uh, were very, very intriguing. And I think probably the one that caught my attention the most, yeah. there was a group of three, and I, th I think four was actually their max, where they would get together once a week, yeah. and they would read through 25 to 35 chapters per week, and they would get together once a week, and they would discuss what they learned. And if yeah. everybody had read through all of the chapters, then they yeah. would move on to the next chunk. But if not everybody had read through it, yeah. They would call that uh, or see that as an opportunity to go back and re reread it. Yeah. Uh, so, but they would meet every week, yeah. and for the purpose of growing specifically, so they had lots mm -hmm. of things to talk about because they're reading twenty-five to thirty chapters per week. So yeah. they had lots of things to talk about, lots of things to discuss, and also one of the things that they did is they specifically prayed for the next person that they would be inviting into that group. Oh, okay. So these groups were constantly yeah. changing. So the so groups themselves were made to be a tool for evangelism. The, the, the actual group was an evangelism tool. Okay. So uh, whenever there was more than four people, yeah. then if the fifth person would come along and they would stay with the group, and you, of course you give it a few weeks, it's like, are you serious about this? And if they were, yeah. then you would split off and, and hopefully get two groups of, of, of three going again, yeah. and then you start looking for your next group. But they were constantly yeah. going. Very, very versatile groups. Didn't require a lot of uh, leadership from outside because the, there wasn't a specific leader for the group, yeah. um, but very versatile. So, I mean, these are one of the uh, great models for, for something that, that um, can, can really move in a community. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, thanks for the question, Ron. That was another, yeah. that was another good one. We got a few good questions getting tossed in here. Yeah. Uh, not, not tons of questions, but when there are, there are yeah. good ones, that's for sure. Um, well, if that's it, then thanks, everyone, for, for tuning in. Uh, it's been fun having you all on yeah. here. Uh, it's been fun chatting with you guys. It's Absolutely. been a good, it's been a good time. Thank you for the Yeah, <laughs> yeah we're glad, glad to be able to have this opportunity to do it. Um, if any of you watching missed it, uh, John is actually preaching again this Sunday. Um, so if you want to know more about what's going on and how to vote and all that sort of stuff, that will again be covered um, this Sunday. Um, and you get to tune in and hear John speak speak once again what's what's topic for this Sunday well it's Pentecost Sunday but it's yeah. very relational focused and we've yeah. been we talked about that a lot yeah. today and it'll be yeah. again next Sunday so uh, yeah, I specifically asked Pastor Dale I mean this is probably more Christmas 30 it's like so Pentecost Sunday can, can we maybe can I do that one and he, yeah. yeah yeah okay so um, it is it is where like we're talking about experiential faith I don't know Abe had a question yeah. about that yeah. Um, so you're going to go more in depth on that on this, Sunday. This is yeah. there's more on Sunday. So we're, 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 the Holy Spirit comes, and even the way the, the message yeah. is entitled uh, Pentecost Sunday, the Holy yeah. Spirit comes. It's not something that happened two thousand years ago. It's something that yeah. the Holy Spirit's active, and, and yeah. it's part of how we live. And, and he's he's yeah. he's active in our lives, and there's lots of room for growth and maturity and, yeah. di and discipleship. Yeah. Um, but yeah, look forward to it. Perfect. Well, thanks for tuning in. Uh, keep uh, John and Marilyn and their family in your prayers. Keep Absolutely. the pastoral search committee uh, in, in your prayers. And uh, we look forward to seeing you in person, hopefully soon. Thanks for tuning in, and we'll see you again very soon. Awesome.